Over the past few decades, coffee culture has transformed a mundane cup of joe into an elevated experience, one influenced by brewing techniques and the origin of the beans themselves. Now one company is adding a few other ingredients to the mix, such as diversity, inclusion, and sustainability. Nancy Chin has the story. Something's brewing on the first floor of this building, tucked among the warehouses of industrial Brooklyn. The complex and caffeinated flavors of Vietnam, carefully roasted to their chocolate caramelized peak under the watchful eye of Sarah Nguyen. Oh, this is heavy. It's 30 pounds. Okay. There you go. Pour it all in. Pour it all in. All of it. As the CEO of Nguyen Coffee Supply, Nguyen says timing is everything. Just one minute can make all the difference for these beans. Ooh! That does smell really good. You smell the sugar, it's yeah. caramelizing. Yeah. That sugar is starting to really pop. Yeah. So we're currently now at a 410 degrees Fahrenheit. So when it's hotter, it's developing much rapidly at this point. Yeah, Checking because yeah, yeah. every five, 10 seconds will change the profile of the bean. Nguyen knows the importance of striking while the bean is hot. When the self-described activist entrepreneur started the first specialty Vietnamese coffee company in the United States four years ago, coffee from Vietnam was both nowhere and everywhere. I didn't know that Vietnam was the second largest grower of coffee beans in the world. Yes. And honestly, Nancy, I think it's because of lack of transparency. How so? So when Vietnamese coffee leaves Vietnam, the label doesn't say product of Vietnam or Vietnamese coffee beans, it just says coffee. With only Brazil outpacing it, Vietnam exported about 3.5 billion pounds of coffee in 2020 alone, most of it mixed into commercial grade blends. And while Vietnam is the world's largest producer of the Robusta bean, the vast majority of high-end specialty coffee is created from a different species, the Arabica bean. What are some of the misperceptions about Vietnamese coffee? People wouldn't use words such as cheap, disgusting, nasty, rubber tires to describe the Robusta bean. But really, that experience or those descriptions, it's really rooted in the production, not the variety. If you've pushed an entire industry into an instant cheap coffee production, you're gonna get a lower quality product because you're selling for a cheaper product. A perception and process roasters like Nguyen and others are trying to change by embracing the Robusta bean. Robusta beans have up to double the caffeine content of Arabica. Robusta beans also have up to 60% less fats and sugars than Arabica. So what that means from a flavor experience is you'll get a much more dark chocolatey, nutty, bold, and low acidic coffee with Robusta beans. Nguyen Coffee Supply is part of a burgeoning shift as more specialty Vietnamese coffee companies open around the country. Well, I think we're in the very first early stages of Robusta as a specialty uh, beverage. Jonathan Morris, the author of Coffee, A Global History, says much of Arabica's appeal has been in how it's processed, with Robusta left out of the picture. What we're beginning to see is, well, what happens if we try those things with Robusta? Will that make a bit of a difference? Will that create some specialty beverage? And with a coffee history spanning 500 years, Morris calls the increased awareness a new mindset in approaching that morning cup of joe. This is a lot of thought to put into a cup of something that you normally drink uh, when you're not thinking that clearly yet. <laughs> yeah, there's a little thought involved, there's a little work involved, but it pays off. Uh, you know, it pays off for you both in terms of what you taste and in terms generally, uh, hopefully, of what you've achieved by your purchase. And I think that is something that is becoming more and more important to consumers. For Nguyen, it wasn't just the mass-produced Vietnamese coffee that left a bitter taste in her mouth, but how the farmers themselves are impacted. Vietnamese coffee historically and currently has always really been pushed into the instant coffee market mm -hmm. or the cheaper commodity coffee market. And because they don't have visibility representation, they can't really advocate for better. That inequality became a driving force in starting the company. Both of Nguyen's parents fled Vietnam as refugees after the war, but most of her family still lives there today. A 2016 trip changed the course of her life when the then documentary maker connected with a farmer and family friend. Their idea to celebrate Vietnamese coffee by cultivating better beans. 
my producing partner and other farmers I talked to, they're like, how come we can't be a part of specialty coffee? Because the industry kept saying, you don't belong. And so he had never actually exported to the United States. He felt so proud that his coffee beans made it to America. <laughs> Today, the beans roasted here are shipped to all 50 states. The company says the revenue has grown by 24 times in just two years. Nguyen says she now partners with three farms, paying workers a higher rate for the more labor-intensive process. She's also hoping to import Vietnamese coffee culture, a slow-paced ritual influenced by French colonization, one in appreciation of every last drop. In Vietnam, you actually eat breakfast first, and then you go to a coffee shop or, or a cafe stand, you have your coffee alone, like it is its own moment. The coffee is traditionally made as a single serving using a Vietnamese coffee press known as a fin filter and served with sweetened condensed milk. I love how easy it goes down. <laughs> smooth, yes, right? Yes, it's very, very smooth. While the company continues to roast and refine the flavors of Vietnamese coffee, Nguyen goes beyond the drink. It wasn't about the coffee, I mean it is, but it was really about this mission for me to bring visibility and representation to such a historically marginalized community and one that had been completely rendered invisible for its massive contributions to the global coffee experience. Like, I felt like there was an injustice there for me to write through developing our own supply chain and then of course through storytelling and connecting people and bringing people together through coffee. A community spanning thousands of miles getting together over a cup of coffee. For CBS Saturday Morning, Nancy Chen, Brooklyn, New York. <laughs> I love everything about this story, but where's the coffee, Nancy? Bring it to me. Where's Bring the coffee? Give me the Robusta. <laughs> I'm in. 15, More caffeine. 15. More caffeine? Yes. Yes. Sign us up. Win coffee. All right. Good stuff.